I'm not gonna oh. make a cough. I know. And we're, and we're back. We're dudes, back together, baby. Dudes. <laughs> hey, check this out. I, I wanted to show you this earlier. I can't oh, wait. Oh, All right. Oh. oh look at that. It? Oh. How cool is it? Ah, you froze. <laughs> Shoot. Hopefully you'll be back. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. You we're back. We're back. Yeah, okay. Check it out, man. Check oh, it out. Yes. Is that the man? Uh, pronounce the name. Ma I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. think it's Mane. 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 Yeah. It's bonkers, isn't it? So. Oh, it's beautiful. It's yeah. Dude, the single cut. If you if you're not watching this, everybody on SBL, Scott has just revealed a brand new, unbelievable like piece of art six string. Yeah, it sort of looks like a spaceship slash. It's like a shark, isn't it? Look at the fin coming out of the water. Yeah, I put it down right. here like that. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <sighs> I can't play it, man. It's like I can, but I'm I'm just I kind of look down at the minute. I'm just like. Whoa, that's a, lot, that's a lot of frets and a lot of. Uh, I yeah, think it's got 24, 25, 26, 28, 28. I heard you frets, playing that. String. I heard you playing that. I mean, you've done some. You've done some content with it. It sounds incredible. Like I, the, it does the sound piezo. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got really piezo, cool. It's got a. It's got a piezo. It's got one neck pickup. Yeah. Um, you can mix the 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 magnetic pick the magnetic neck pickup with the piezo. It's got. Um, it's got some push and pull knobs that I'm not sure what they do, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's got a, yeah, right. it's, it's got a tone control. <laughs> yeah, it's got six strings, and it's uh, it's a beast, man. And it, it's made really beautifully. Like the the build quality is really fantastic. It obviously looks Italian because it is made. In, I mean, like it just looks Italian. The Italians have got the style, haven't they? Come so on, so cool. You know, it's beautiful. It, yeah, and it's but it's a beast to play because it's. Well, there's just so many strings and so many strings, so many strings and so many, <laughs> and so many frets and and it's 31 inch scale as well, actually. So it's oh right, it's so a, shorter. It's a it's a short scale, <clears throat> yeah, but it's uh, it's and the worst thing about it all. So the worst thing about it, if it is that it's actually a bass that was made by this guy called Mane, uh, or, you know, it made by a guy called Andrea. Um, who owns this Mane bass company, M A W -N, N E, and and he designed this bass in conjunction with a guy called Daniel Camada, yeah, who is just this phenomenal musician who's just like. So I've heard Danielle play this bass, <laughs> which and, and, and then I play it and I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Because it's just such a unique sound. It just right. it sounds kind of like a massive, big acoustic low yeah, guitar. It does. You're right. right. Yep. Yeah. So and so I'm really used to hearing him play it when I play. It. I just sound like me and and not him, <laughs> which is fine. Which is fine. But it's just I'm just like damn, like that guy's a freak show in all of the greatest ways. He's just such a great player and musician. And I'm just like, oh, I need to, yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's you, one of them you played me some of that stuff. Into. Yeah, you played me some of that stuff at one point, and it was totally remarkable. And like yeah. speed, fluidity, and then also in and out of like of um, key centers so beautifully, yeah. like yeah. Where, where it's beautiful and melodic, and then outside, and then in at a moment that maybe you was sort of surprising. Really cool playing, and yeah. I mean, and and it's so funny because we both know that you know buying a bass doesn't make us sound like somebody but still <laughs> we do it right we kind yeah, of are like yeah. oh because we want what is it we want the inspiration right like you buy yeah. that bass because you hear a pedal or whatever because you hear someone do it and yeah oh, you just you're doing it because you want that you want just a little you of course you don't think you're going to sound like danielle is that am i getting that right danielle oh danielle yeah yeah absolutely yeah. correct you know yeah. that yeah but but if but if you can get a little closer right if you, oh, if you, just, <laughs> a little closer, yeah, just, just a little closer just just come on just ah, even even one or two percent is going to be fine to justify the purchase right <laughs> he's so good dude and yeah. it would definitely help if there was like another like 50 players playing this bass all mm. in different ways all in completely right. different ways and i'm like oh yeah it's cool but there's not there's just Daniel <laughs> just doing his things 
<laughs> Daniel and oh. me kind of just sort of like getting dragged along on his coattails. And just, it's ah, cool. And just, yeah, yeah, it's cool. Did you, it's great. Did you play uh, six like growing up, or did you have a period where you like heavily focused into six string bass? Yeah, uh, yes, I did. So, but not okay. So I've had. A, Okay, so no, actually, but definitely high C. So my ah, relationship yeah, with, with bass, yeah, my relationship yeah. with bass, bass is actually quite funny. I think that on my first professional gig, what bass was I playing? I think it was a six string actually. So, but there was an old bass at the shop. You yeah. know, so I was working as an apprentice luthier when I got my first gig as a, a professional bass player. Side right. note, I'd actually never played in a band before. <laughs> so I got this, uh, this yeah, gig do it. and I didn't have a bass. So I, they gave me this bass and um, uh, it, this, it was like an old six string bass that was lying around yeah. at the shop. So I was like, okay. So I took that bass and used it on the gig, but um but it was just like it was a it's like an aircraft carrier right i was like the right. neck was so wide and so i actually took the b and the c string off and i played it just as a four string and oh, crazy just the, yeah. the center four strings just the center four strings i just took yeah. the b off took the c off played those center four strings um and then went and did all like the cruise gigs and stuff like that when i first started working on the cruise ships that six string took that six string and just did the same thing it was just those center four strings with like amazing a, a, really yeah 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 oh, yeah um i love because I that just, i really wanted to understand what i was doing it was just so much information on the six string so so I did that. And then when I got back to the UK, I actually ordered a fretless four string and I played that fretless four string exclusively. It was the only bass that I had for years. So amazing. It was so I turned up to sort of like the funniest gigs um just playing that fretless like i did As like a fretless guy you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah but but nobody yeah. knew because i just played it like a normal fretted bass so sure, i did all sure. of these like funny gigs um and nobody even knew that it was fretless because i was well, that's like, a testament wow. to your intonation then too <laughs> yeah i just and, wow. and i got really useful i'll tell you what man like when i was playing that that fretless bass exclusively for, for just to give you like a timeline, maybe like five years, four or five years, yeah. only fretless. It's the only bass I owned. It felt so weird playing a fretted bass. It was awful. It <laughs> Crazy. just felt so weird. I was like, oh, it was just all, I really didn't like it. But, right. um, but then after a while, you know, you, you need new things in your life. And then yeah, I sort of right. like started, started playing um, fretted basses, and got myself a five string and then at them at one point went to a five string with a high c and i played that mm -hmm. for a long time actually fret um uh, uh, yeah five string bass but with a high c without the low b obviously and then did that all the way until i started publishing videos on youtube um and even when you look back at the first few videos i did on youtube i've got a, a bass with a, a low e and a high c and then yeah, at some point i, I was like Ooh, well, we've spoken about it before. I was like, hang on. There's loads of dudes playing, you know, basses with low E's and high C's, and they're all amazing. Right. Like, can I carve something else for myself? Can I do something else? And I was like, oh, I'm actually just going to go back to a four string. In fact, even more than that, I'm going to go to a P bass. I'm going to yeah. play the <laughs> the most shredless bass. I mean, it's sort of yes. like you know, the bass that wasn't built mm -hmm. for shredding. I'm going to play that bass. So I got and myself a P shred bass. It. Yeah, yeah, and I'm going to shred it, yeah. And, yeah. That's, and that <laughs> was the start of the P bass. And then, and then you know, and then the rest is history. I've got like a bunch of different basses. But yeah, so I haven't really ever played a six-string bass a bunch on gigs before. It's definitely, yeah. it's, it's, it's a cool instrument. It's a cool instrument, but it's a lot of strings. It's oh, it's so many strings. <laughs> Just so much muting. I mean, you know, like yeah. to, to play the high C and then not have stuff down below ringing and yeah i had a oh, i had a six yeah. string stint i did the thing where i went from four and then i was like oh i'm not gonna play five i'm just gonna yeah. go right to the best which is the <laughs> six <laughs> <laughs> what did you, you get? Know? I had a Carvin. I ordered a Carvin, oh, you know, nice the catalog. Man. Did you guys get the catalog in the UK, the Carvin dude, catalog? Dude, yeah, with Bunny yeah. Brunel in there, of course, yeah. Man. Yeah, Bunny <laughs> Brunel, dude. Yes. I ordered an LB76 Koa wings, neck through, gold oh, yeah. hardware. I mean, and I 
played that bass a ton. And I even did a, I remember like I composed a bass solo for my, you know, and I played it in, in front of a bunch of people at high school, you know, in the big gymnasium auditorium. And, you yeah, know, and, yeah, yeah. and I remember yeah. like, and people really cheered at the end of it. It had a bunch of slapping and tapping in it. And I remember that made an impression on old Bob Allison, my old man. And he would, I mean, he maybe just stopped saying this to me on about every phone call. Be on the phone and he'd say, so, uh, I'd be in my 30s. I mean, long yeah. past the bass solo that I played at, at 17. And he'd say, so, you uh, playing that six? And are you uh, writing any new bass solos? <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, it's just hard. like that was the, like after that, for my dad, that was as good as I, it was going to get. And then, you know, yeah. I started to play a five, maybe a four, <laughs> playing on songs. And I just, in my in my dad's eyes, I just sort of started to diminish. She's like, well, sorry, are, are you playing that six? Are you slapping and tapping and writing bass solos? I'm, like, ah, I'm kind of trying to do a different thing now, dad. You know, but he Amazing. thought that was the shit. You know, he yeah, loved that. Yeah. <laughs> and I did, too, in real time. I mean, I loved that era. So fun. God. Carvin were a huge bass company back then, weren't they? Like I'm not huge. Is it, have they changed? Is it Kiesel? Is that it's is Kiesel? That and, I, and I yes, it is. And I I think that maybe someone another owner just came in. I'm actually talking completely out of turn. I don't know what happened, but I think they're still called both. I think it's called oh, like right, okay. Carvin Kiesel or Key. I'm not sure. I, like I said, I don't know what I'm talking Jenkins about. Jenkins plays uh, one, right? Has he got a keys? I'm sure he's got Maybe. You, you know, who I just saw recently who plays one is uh, uh, Adam Neely. Oh, does he play one? Yeah. It's like a natural it? one, and it's, oh, it's like fan fret, and it has gold hardware fan, on it. It's a five. Oh, I got that fan fret thing. Total I know. pervert, obviously. <laughs> 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 you are not a pervert, Adam. Come on, I know that. <laughs> that thing is what everybody though. else. But everybody else that plays a fan fret, all perverts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, well that includes me, dude. Because because uh, uh, Dingwall just sent me a base to check out. I'm like, whoa, look at this thing. So I freaking I'm knew in it. that zone too. <laughs> 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 Freaking knew it. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I actually really like the fan fret thing. You know, I I really love them. I've played which ones have I played? I played Nolly's. Do you know Nolly Get Good from uh, Periphery? I've played his like yeah, sure. times. That was yep, great. And I've I played some other course. ones as well. I really love them, except when you go up into the sort of like above the 15th fret you have to kind of like yes, twist you have to around go backwards. a little bit that's a little bit weird yeah. that bit but but everything else is killer i uh, yeah and lee sklar always sounds killer on his as well oh, i know so cool oh man with the Phil Collins stuff. yeah Umansky. oh you has got that big six yeah when He's i was so in good. new york yeah i hung with him and i brought my um voran saku bass and he was yeah. playing it and like slapping on it and sounded just like jacob umansky <laughs> you know and i'm like god why can't i you know and then he's like hang on and he like ran back to his car he's like i've got to get my bass and i'm like great oh, and then he like you know came back and had his and i got to check it out i mean it is just a those dingwall sixes are beastly i mean it's he's it's a I love the design of his monster neck i, I just yeah. love the color of it like the white so it's got like the black binding around it it's yeah like, i know <gasps> what band Very does jacob cool. play with i can't remember the name but the band is so called good. intervals intervals that's it they're yep. really great aren't they i love they're this really kind of sort great. of like this sort of like subgenre of metal that's come about sort of like technical has it got a name is yeah. it technical metal is that what it's called I, I would just be i would be hazarding a guess i mean the thing with intervals is it's all instrumental and yeah maybe technical metal but it's also really melodic it's it's yeah. very like pleasing to listen to in terms of like diatonic harmony there's stuff that steps out of that but it's not like noisy in it's not um so obtuse there are some metal bands that it's so obtuse you you have a hard time finding a melody in it Got this it, stuff yeah, is yeah. very melodic and singable with themes and beautiful stuff and counter melodies and aaron the main guy guitar player in that band is a killer writer and i think he's thinking more like cinematic versus it, like yeah. versus yeah, aggression yeah. Um, I got to see them when they were through Minneapolis, and it's it's unbelievable. They have all their pedal boards linked to a computer that changes all their patches in real time for them. And also the light show is connected to Ableton. So if a song is going, all the lights are changing exactly in time with the music. And it's it's pretty unbelievable, actually. It was a really great show. 
Wow. Have they got girlfriends? Yeah. No time. No time. <laughs> <laughs> you are spicy, dude. You are oh. on fire today, Scott Devine. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's well end of the week, dude. Uh, Friday, man. I was going to say great. something about Adam's uh, so animals as leaders, but you know they haven't got a bass player, so you know I'm. Not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I really do. I love animals as leaders as well. They're a great. Band, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in yes, sort of like that kind of genre as well. So great, and there's some great guitar players as well. Just man, I'd love like Tobin, for me. I was, I was, yeah, yeah, yeah just so great. He actually started his own guitar brand recently as well. Maybe yeah, not even recently. Abasi Concepts. Yeah, I believe, that was a few right? years yep. ago. Yeah, yeah, that was wicked. They look beautiful as well, oh, and I know, they're, they're so fan cool. Yeah, the fan I know. Thing's taking over. A lot over, of people man. doing that thing. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to mention anything about perverts, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> too late. I know. Too, too late. late. <laughs> too late. I went all in. Anyway, today we're talking about transcription, aren't we? Yeah, and this is your we are. Idea. I'm not sure whether you remember, but you. I was looking through our notes. Um, yeah. before and i came to a bunch of notes and one of yours was the title was do i have to transcribe you know yeah. do i have to transcribe so do you want to because it's transcription's a weird thing isn't it because it's yes the, the, the name of it is actually what it is i was trying to think of something it's so true like, you're it's right true, isn't it yeah like yes. do you want to do you want to describe to the guys and girls what transcription is yes well i, I will tell you I'll tell you all what I thought it was and then what I've maybe come to understand it as. So to me, transcription always denotes this sort of academic process, right? Of, oh, <laughs> we're going to hear the thing that we're going to play. We're not going to slow it down. We're going to hear a blazing bebop jazz solo. And we're going to somehow ascertain this knowledge to write it down all on staff paper in standard notation. That's what I thought transcription was coming up. And I thought it was reserved for the elite of the elites. The transcription right. meant, well, you went through some kind of training, some kind of like <laughs> Navy SEAL music training. <laughs> yes! <laughs> like some kind of like insane transcription boot camp to be able to yeah. do this. And it always felt um, elite, ivory tower, far away, daunting, something that I, as a plebeian rock musician, would never be able to do. And of course, that's not what it means. I think, I still think of it as maybe writing something down. I mean, to transcribe, I don't know. I'm, I'm just yeah. hazarding a guess. It, it, to me, at least, it calls up writing something down. But yeah. you don't even have to write it down. All transcription means to me, and then, Scott, I, I'd love to hear your take on this, too. And then it'd be fun to talk about, you know, what you've done with this over the years and how you've decided to transcribe. But yeah, what I yeah. think it is, is I think it's just learning something with intention and then playing it with that same intention. So to the best of your ability, taking a bass line or a melody or any piece of music or even a beat, something musical that you've heard and repeat it. You can slow exactly. it down. Yeah. You can, yeah. right? You can take that bass line for... Um, uh, I want you back. Boom. And go, oh, okay, I'm going to play that first thing. And if you learn that piece, guess what? You've just transcribed. And how cool is that? Do you need to write it down on staff paper? No. Should you? Maybe. But I really think that by deciding you're going to learn something, with intention, not just kind of do your own thing and jam over the top of it. That's not transcription. I'm drawing a line in the sand between, I mean, jamming along to records is wonderful and everyone should do it all the time. But Absolutely. transcription for me crosses a different line. It means that now you're going to actually put yourself in the shoes of that bass player, in the case of learning a bass line, and learn the thing that he or she played on the record and get it into your repertoire. And I think that is the most basic level of transcription. How does yeah. how does that track for you? Exactly that. And and one thing to just point out for any, if anybody's wondering, um, for clarity's sake, and you've got to learn it by ear. So it's oh, not yes, yeah. That's like the key thing, isn't it? So it's exactly what Ian's talking about. It is, um, it's learning a bass line, a a groove, a riff a solo a lick it's learning something that somebody else has done and you are going to learn it by ear 
i.e. Yes. you're not going to look at the music, you're not going to look at any tab, you're not going to look at anything like that, you are going to sit YouTube there. YouTube videos. Yeah, you, yeah. It's like you're going to sit there and you are going to listen and you're going to work it out note by note. It's painstaking, the whole thing. We'll we'll get into that in one minute. So, yeah, so that you did a great job of explaining exactly what it what it is. Um, So was because I know that some people didn't transcribe at all. They didn't work out anybody's bass lines or solos or grooves. Like, were you a were you a non transcriber? Were you a heavy transcriber or were, were you somewhere in the middle? I was heavy and I didn't even really know it or I didn't think I was transcribing. I was just learning songs. So I got crazy into learning Rush songs really early, probably 15 or 16, and Dream Theater and trying to learn Victor Wooten stuff to the best of my ability. (laughs) Oh, yeah, dude. Yes. I mean, I was... I, I was voracious. I would sit in my room um, at my dad's house on the weekend, and uh, and I had a little, you know, like a little boom box, and I would just go back and forth and back and forth and try to, and really just try to listen. And there was no slowing down at that time, or at least I didn't have any mechanism to do that. And there was no YouTube. I mean, it's just like, God, it sounds, you know, like the Stone Ages. But um, it was really, really good for me. And it, to me, it didn't feel like an academic exercise. I just loved that music so much that mm. I was so, and then I wanted to memorize. So then I would have this thing of, well, I'm going to play Tom Sawyer, for instance, start to finish, and it would kind of be like a video game. How well am I doing? Ooh, I messed that part up. Or like, you know, but I would try to play through a whole tune and then get it into memory. And and for me, that became the way I learned, was via ear and then learning something and memorizing that piece of music. Yeah, exactly. So, so I was super heavy when it came to transcription. Yeah, like crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, just loved it. And most of the breakthroughs where I felt like a real leap in my playing, uh, most of it I can actually attach it to transcription and transcribing yeah. something that somebody's played, and it's unlocked something in my playing. So, just to sort of like from a conceptual standpoint i look at if somebody was like well why do i need to transcribe so for me language um transcription is the learning of the language you're learning how to you're listening to what somebody else is is playing okay the words that they are speaking on their instrument and then you are you're learning that sound that shape on the instrument and then you are learning to replicate it just in terms of like when we were kids we listened to our parents and they said mama to help us and we were like mama or dada (laughs) you know we learn through um from trying to replicate our parents same deal here right we're listening to people that we freaking love the sound of their instrument the sound of their bass whatever and then we are getting our instrument and we're trying to replicate what they're doing and and that's why it's so important to me because i was learning all of these new ways these new words i could say on the instrument so i can remember going down to Maybe we've spoken about this before, actually. I can remember going down to the CD shop and CDs were like $15 a pop, right? 12 pounds. And I had no money, right? So I was like, I was skint, dude. And and I go in, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna buy a, I'm gonna buy a CD. So I'd look in all the CDs, and I think it was like, where was it? Like HMV or wherever it was, and or Virgin Records. So I'd be looking yeah. around, and in my mind, I could justify the the price of the CD of the fifteen dollars because I knew that I was actually going to get new language from that. It wasn't just right. like, yeah, it wasn't just sort of like oh, I'm going to enjoy this CD. I'm going to sit and listen to it. Of course, it was that was going to happen. But I'm actually going to inject vocab, brand new vocabulary directly into yes. my playing by listening. Like the ROI is huge. Even if you get sort of like Big time. two or three kind of like f- cool phrases that yes. you can that you can absorb into your playing from one CD. That's huge. You yes. know? So that's it, why it was really key to my, to my development as a musician. I love the connection to learning a language. And, and it, even like as you're a teenager and you're learning an instrument or in your 20s or whatever, it, it's sort of like learning slang. You know, like when you learn swear words or you learn yeah, slang yeah. and you're like, oh, this is kind of cool. And it kind of makes me sound like my friends or like you encounter mm. some new person who's saying kind of a different thing. And you're like, oh, yeah. I want to. 
I, I kind of want to, and you maybe move to that and you start saying those phrases, right? Exactly. It's like, that's that, the yeah. same. I mean, now I'm calling it a freaking strimmer, Scott Devine. I mean, what, yeah. what the, that's there's no more weed whacker for me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but man, I love that where, yeah, the mama, where you're trying to, you you know, you hear your mother as a young child saying mama, and you're trying to do that. That is exactly what it is. It, just that when you're younger, you don't know that you're transcribing, but I yep. really like that thought of relating that musical learning, um, of a language to music, you know, you're learning this language. And so speaking these phrases of things that you gravitate toward is the, one of the best ways to do it. And you're and so I, right. You're, I, I just want to say you're so right you about the, the, uh, idea that it has to be from your ears. I, I want to just say that again. Like it mm. has to be something you hear, not something that you go and watch. So if you want to get a fingering together and you go on YouTube and watch how it's done, it is not transcription. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. You've got to do it by ear. You've got to do it by yeah. ear. It's just, that's the sort of like the devil's in the detail, isn't it? And, and yes. they do this, you know, they do this in a way in, in different, uh, in different, I guess, sort of like skill sets as well. Like I know that actors have learned, like you, you're asked sometimes to learn a monologue. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like something that somebody else has done before and you learn it and you listen to them do it and then you'll do it and you listen to where they're leaving space and where they're kind exactly. of like leaning in and pulling back and yes. all of that, like replication of what people have done before is really, really important. So, um, yeah, it was huge for me. And to, to add to your point, yeah, definitely. Um, it's all about listening to it. I will say though, that it's incredibly frustrating to do it. So if anybody has done this before and they're like, oh yeah, it's really hard. It is hard and it's super frustrating and you have to go note by note, which is yeah. such a big pain in the ass. So, you know, you, you're playing the riff, <laughs> you, you, you're, li you're playing it on the CD player or the, the, whatever you're playing on your, probably your phone now, right? You play the riff, <laughs> yep. you play one note and then you have to stop it. You stop it. <laughs> then you have to try and find that note on your instrument. Then you rewind a little bit, you play the riff again, and then you let it do two notes, and then you stop it, and then you try and yeah. find the second note. And doing that and yep. it is a really, it's a long process, but I think that that, in terms of what we were talking about earlier, the devil's in the detail, it's really helping your ear as well. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say is, I haven't got like a big... I'm not super against people slowing it down. And the reason being, especially if they're, they're using their ears, because it is like in the past, I can remember trying to work out some incredibly difficult stuff. And I can remember to sort of like after like half an hour of trying to learn a phrase that's like five seconds long, just getting bummed out and be like, oh, and just sort of like leaving it. And I think that, you know, just to make it a little easier, make you still you're still working on note recognition. If you have to Absolutely. slow it down, don't sort of like kick your ass about it too much because the it might stop you getting fed up with From it doing and thinking, it. "Well, this is too I agree. hard." Yeah, exactly. So I, I yeah. think slowing it down is cool. Well, and I was going to ask you about that because we both know that there are some there are some jazz educators out there that are really against that have made really soapbox stances um, against slowing it down. And um, and it's interesting. I've thought about that, and I understand that idea that well, instead of slowing it down, what you should maybe do is start with easier material, like things that yeah. are you know easier to, and then as you go, you get to work up to that harder material, but. I will say this, I don't endeavor to be 100% fluent in jazz bebop language. So what I want is I want to learn some of those phrases and understand how some of those phrases work, but I will not go through the time of starting with the most simple thing and then taking 30 years to transcribe all of this music until finally my ear is, and, and I can play Brecker solos. I won't, yeah. I just know that about myself. So if there's something that I want to learn, and I think, let me back up. I think that that ideology is the ivory tower elite jazz bro snobbery that turns me off to the genre. The idea that, oh, well, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You don't get to learn that lick just yet, young Padawan. Like that to me. 
I'm not, yeah. I'm not into that. I'm not into that. I think that um, just because you slow something down uh, and still transcribe it, it does not mean that, uh-oh, well, now this isn't valid anymore. Um, and I you think do. there's an argument that, well, you're shortchanging yourself a little bit. That could be. But again, I want to learn how I want to learn and how best I learn and what's going to motivate me forward. So your yeah. point of if you need to slow something down to not have this incredible, horrible frustration that will make you not do it, I think go ahead. Slow exactly, it down. Exactly, man. And it takes a long it's time no as problem. well. It's no problem. It takes a long time, man. And if anybody out there is saying, don't slow things down, well, first of all, do you know what I mean? Like, just chill out. <laughs> just chill out. And secondly, <laughs> you have no kids, do you? Do you know what I mean? They just don't have any kids. Like, let's be right. Do you know what I mean? They're just like, no. you got to sit there for like oh, yeah. four hours. hours doing this shit. And I'm like, dude, have some kids. Do you know what I mean? Got some kids and then come and tell me again. <laughs> It's I've so got freaking true. I've got freaking 15 <laughs> minutes to learn this riff man like get out of my face <laughs> yeah 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 right and I mean really like it doesn't matter how you learn something I mean it, it only it only just goes into what's making you a musician so so for me yeah. if I want to learn that Parker lick and I want to see it as a scholastic endeavor but I'm not tr I'm not playing gigs where I'm going to use that thing I'm not going to go through the decade of transcription work to to get my ear to that level now, is that shortchanging me? Potentially. But I'm doing rock and pop gigs and, you know, I'm not trying to be that, yeah. you know, yeah, I'm not trying to be in that lane. So I think slowing down is fine. That said, it is pretty cool. It's a cool feeling to not slow something down. And like you say, do the note by note thing and go through it yeah. and go, oh, it's I do where I do agree with the no slow down, don't slow it down is that that does like battle harden you better. Mm, like if yeah, you go yeah. through that process, you get it's the, the grit around your transcription skill is improved. But yeah. I don't care if you want to slow something down, slow it down. Yeah, I think maybe me. like I, you, there's a middle ground in there. I think that somebody you can try and get it down, and then if something's been a complete pain in the ass, and you're just like, I cannot get this right, just slow right. it down. It's all right, you know. Lightning's going to strike you, and you you know it, it's going to be all good. And the also, jazz police are going to. Open yeah, up, the, jazz yeah, 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 the jazz police, you know, with, uh, you know, like <laughs> those little singletons out there. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, oh, am I going to get in trouble? Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, this is all in jest. I'm just feeling rather yeah, 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 yeah. sarcastic in English today um, <laughs> because it's like a, it's definitely an English thing. You know, like one of my, yeah. one, of, yeah. one of my friends comes, uh, he's like, he's American dude. He comes over. And he comes over quite often and we're hanging out a few years ago and he was like dude he was like is it like an english thing to be like n like kind of like nasty to each other all the time and just like be constantly kind of ribbing each other i was like oh yeah that's like a thing <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> like the more you do it yeah the more you do it to somebody the more you like them like <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah because it denotes comfort right it's it's yeah. like it denotes relationship yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when you can offend someone and it doesn't offend them, means you're good to go, right? <laughs> exactly that. Exactly. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, when, yeah. when you are transcribing, I've got a couple of tips that I used to that I just want to share in, in terms Great. of my process, right? So, I need first em. of all, like I, I, I loved using headphones because mm -hmm. headphones really, especially like depending on the sort of like the quality of the material, really, if it was like some of the stuff I was trying to transcribe was kind of old and crummy in terms of the quality. So headphones really helped me out there. Um, yeah. Obviously, if it's a, if it's a kind of sort of like a modern, you know, if it's been recorded in the last 30, 40 years, it's not a big deal. But for the older stuff, it is, um, you know, especially like the upright bass stuff, you know, I oh, can yeah. remember like transcribing some, some of like, some of that stuff and it was like it's like listening to an old dude singing in the shower do you know what i mean <laughs> you know, I like, it's hard hard to find yeah yeah exactly so i was like i needed to use headphones for that and also i really like liked singing the notes as i was, <gasps> I was so hoping I'd, yes yes yeah yes. so i'd like play the note on the well for me it was like a tape player right i play it i pause it and then I've, I've just heard it, and then I'd sing the pitch. Nah, yes. And then, no, 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 no. And then I'd find and then that you'd on find the bass. It. Yeah, yes. exactly. Then I'd play the next note, then I'd pause <clears> it, 
na, and then na, 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 na. Mm-hmm. I've got two notes now. So I do yes. that through the phrase. So I'd, I, it really helped me like singing the note because otherwise you pause it and then, and then as soon as you play something on the instrument, it kind of takes away from the, from the note you just heard, right? So it's like you hear Definitely. it, pause it, sing it so you can find yes. the pitch, then find it on your instrument. So that was my process with that. And Are you the same? <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And I think that pitch matching, so, you know, and I really, I I have encouraged people to not think about it necessarily as singing, because as soon as you say sing to a bass player that thinks that they can't sing, quote unquote, (laughs) I can't sing, they want to run screaming for the hills, right? So I I like to think about it like, no, 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 you don't have to have a great singing voice necessarily. Little little do they know that we're buttering them up to sing BGVs and the band that they're going to be in (laughs) in 10 years down the road but but to like match the pitch so exactly what you just said that boom you hear that pitch and then instead of just hunting for it on the bass you actually vocalize the pitch you sing it or hum it Hmm, but you but regard however you want to think about it you match it and then when you've matched it with your face in singing or humming then you then you find it you hunt and you find it on the instrument and what's all going to be this amazing theory ear training sandwich or porridge of goodness bread pudding is that when Mm. you find that note with your face you match the pitch and then you connect it to your instrument and then you connect another one and another one it's going to form some kind of maybe a scale pattern that you've seen before or oh it's going to form some kind of oh this is a pentatonic scale wow i didn't oh wow this is a major triad wow and then what happens is the combination right, of the pitch matching and the vocabulary of triads and scales and chord tones, the things that you know on the bass or that you're learning Mm -hmm. are Mm -hmm. all going to start to mix in a delightful figgy pudding that, well, I've never (laughs) had. I don't know if that's, but I'm just trying. I'm trying. I'm trying too hard. (laughs) Hey, dude, I'll take take the figgy pudding, man. But you're absolutely right. The key thing, there's like a key for you. If you miss some of these steps out, you're not getting all the juice from the squeeze and you just learn the riff. This isn't about just learn the riff or learn the lick. It's it's the process that comes after it. So you learn the thing, you learn the line, and yeah. then the key next step is you got to really be looking for is this from a major scale? Is it from yes. a minor scale? Is it from a triad? What interval? Like what is it? That thing right. that you've just learned is like linked to something. So for instance, the big, like I want you back by the Jacksons, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's an A flat major scale. Bomb. Yes, it is. You know, like I know there's some chromatic notes in there, but like it's basically an A flat major scale. Yes. And um, so everything that you tra- should, everything that you transcribe, you should always be trying to figure out what the what shape it it, it kind of attaches itself to. Where, where yes. does it come from? Okay, what what scale is it? What arpeggio is it? What triad is it? Whatever. And then, and then the next thing yeah. is what chord does it work over at the time? So say you've like worked out this thing, like try and work out what the chord is, because that means, imagine if you worked out this thing, right? It's like, oh, it's like a, yeah, it's like an F minus scale type of thing. You know, okay, right? And then Mm -hmm. you listen and you're like, okay, it's an F minor chord. Okay, so that works out, F minor scale, F minor chord. That means, and this is the next the next part once you know the shape of what it is like what if it's a scale triad arpeggio whatever once you know that and then once you know what chord they've used it on then you can start using it over everything else so then next time next time somebody plays an f minor you know you can use it next time somebody plays a g minor hey you can just use that same thing but over g minor scale exactly (laughs) yeah so that's when you sort of like start taking that that piece of language that phrase and you learn to use it in lots of different situations and that is how you really start building your vocabulary oh, base absolutely and the feeling of transcribing something where you've pulled it out of thin air with your voice attached it to the instrument and then you start to see the framework holy crap mm. this is a pentatonic minor is brilliant because right, it, it, it's yeah. it, it's that thing you say of it it's letting you see inside of the matrix you know yeah. the bullets yeah. are coming at you but you're keanu and you're picking them out of thin air yeah but you're dodging <laughs> them gracefully 
It's the best feeling I would, in the world. If I was world. dodging bullets, man, I'd be so graceful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would have hammed yes. it up more. I think Keanu played it too cool, dude. <laughs> He needed to be like jumping splits over the bullets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jean Claude Van Damme, you know, just like huge spread eagle. Yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. Uh, dude, yes. I mean, you know, it, it's, it, it's an amazing, amazing feeling. I mean, it's like, honestly, I mean, do you remember that? I, okay, okay, let me ask you this. Um, I'm going to tell you the first tune I transcribed was With or Without You by U2. And that is a yeah. one, five, six, four, four progression yeah. in D. And it goes, doom, 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 five, doom, 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 six chord, doom, 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 Yes. And I mean, I remember on one string, I heard that bass line because my parents played that Joshua Tree record all the time. Yeah. And I remember hunting on the bass. I was 13. And I remember like, and when I found that first note, I was like, oh, I heard it. I was like, oh, that's that. That's the note that it starts on. Yeah. And then it was like, doom, doom, doom. And then like, doom, doom, doom. <gasps> there's the second note, you know, and just yeah. finding, and I found them all on one string. And then, you know, I went to a bass teacher who said, hey, guess what? You can do that in one position. You don't have <laughs> you to, you know, these are the three <laughs> strings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, just that process of that childlike exploration into matching pitch. I heard the note. I can kind of sing the note. And now I'm hunting and I'm finding it. And when that combines with that thing of a framework yeah. around yeah. oh wow well now there's a position and now i can play any song that does the one five six four progression and they are endless i mean there's thousands and thousands of songs that use the, that progression that's the most popular chord progression that's of all time the one it? right so yeah it's the one it? it's the pachelbel yeah. canon right and i mean then what happens is you after you've transcribed a little bit you've learned a little bit of theory you start to go oh this is all the same. Like, yeah. it's all, it's like all this material is similar and you can learn anything once you've just dug into a little bit of transcription, have a little bit of theory under your belt. I feel like then it's, you go, oh, you're seeing inside of the matrix constantly. You're dodging those bullets left and right. No sweat, you know? And it's, <laughs> yeah. it's just like, it's, uh, and then of course, going on. yeah, you just, whoa, just like <laughs> huge splits, dude, between the two Mack trucks, bullets are passing right under you. It's no worries. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, and, th and then, of course, there's always stuff that's hard to transcribe, fast passages that are using chromatic notes. I mean, the bebop language is, is, a, is a difficult language to transcribe. Yeah. But diatonic language, you know, rock and pop music starting out, I mean, that's, um, that's I think, where probably most people do start, right, yeah. is rock yeah. and pop music, soul yeah. music, right, popular music. And, boy, if you do it by ear... Um, check this out. You ever do this? I, I used to tell my students to turn on a radio station that they were unfamiliar with, and they had to do this, the radio exercise, I called it. They had five tunes, so whatever song was on, they had to play, and they had to actually write down a little chart. They had to write down the progression, oh, yeah. and then if there was a bass line, they had to maybe make some, some notation about what the bass line was doing. And then if they yeah. could get the melody, they had to make the melody. And then the next song would come out, write down the key, write down the chord progression, as much information as you can. Yeah. You have to figure it out in real time, and then that would end, and then the next song would come up, and they'd have to do that for five tunes. And man, I found that the people that actually did that we're transcribing, like we're doubling their transcription skills in just one or two sessions of doing that exercise. That's so you know? interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is a great, it is a great, great exercise, isn't it? Just listening and just putting yourself under that pressure, especially with the chord, like doing the chord sequences as well. Like, yeah, I wish I got into that them. a lot earlier. Yeah, I can remember seeing somebody doing it in my early 20s and I was just like, oh, he can actually just sit without an instrument and write down the chord. And write it That's down, kind of yeah, because you mind. hear it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. How about this? Do you remember when Jocko, someone asked Jocko, a famous Jocko quote was, you know, someone said, uh, how should I practice? And he said, watch TV. 
That was his answer, and people were like, "That what he said, yeah. Yeah, he watched TV. And his whole thing, he made no bones about how much he loved pop music. I was just watching a thing with him recently where he talked about he liked the music that was happening now. He Mm. kind of got, he was such a monster technician and such a freak show musician that he sort of got pushed into jazz. But he actually liked, he grew up loving funk music and R&B music, and he talked about playing his bass and learning... um, uh, commercial jingles. So when he said watch TV, and then he, I think he kind of broke it down later and said it's about learning the jingle. So whatever you know, what's ever on the TV in a jingle, learn that melody. Don't just learn the bass line. Yeah. Learn the melody. Yeah. And oh, I thought that was so cool. Like, and not like oh, well, you need to just only be studying Parker. And he never said that. His yeah. whole thing was learn the things that you hear, no matter what they are. Like yeah. w- whatever is coming at you. Try to f- try to figure them out, I used and then to do gravitate that. I used towards to, the things you love. Yeah, I used to do that on um, on like guitar when I was a kid. I used to just sit there working out, you know, the the ads the ads between the uh, between the shows. I used to watch with my so parents. Cool. I used to yeah. sit there and try and work out the melodies. Yeah, yeah. and I know a bunch of them still. I mean, like yeah. the Simpsons and the Flintstones. Yeah, bon, and, yeah. man, like yeah. all of that. I mean, like I really, really loved it. So. Yeah, if you're listening to this, guys, like, and you're not into transcription, my, I guess sort of, and I do know there are people that haven't transcribed a lot out there, but I think that just at least from my learning experience and and yours, it sounds like as well, Ian, I think that, you know, you're missing out if if you're not because there's, it's just so cool to learn this stuff. And especially, I, I would just, you know, Somebody might be thinking, well, do I learn the full tune? Do I learn little bits? I think that you can do both. You know, you can do both. I was always yeah. a little bit rubbish about learning the full tune. What I really like doing is listening to the bits or finding the bits that just kind of just, I was like, oh, what was that? Yeah. That, that for me, yeah. is, that's the bit I need to go learn, you know. And obviously I've learned like full bass lines and stuff like that, but especially like bass fills. And it's it's the ones that kind of sort of like just jump out and I'm like, I need to go check mm. that out. I need to learn that. Oh, but yeah. And that's so good is following that, following what gets you excited because that's the that's motivation, right? I mean, we've talked about motivation before. We've talked about there's a fear component. I, I don't want to be left behind. I yeah. don't want to, you know, fall apart. There's that. But then there's also an inspiration component where you hear something, you get excited, and you're like, ooh, I have to go learn that yeah, right now. Yeah. I mean, that's such a cool feeling. And I, if, if you have the ability to drop what you're doing and go learn the thing when you feel that feeling, it's always going to lead to like a slight, like a little notch up in your playing. Um, I think Absolutely, following yeah. that feeling of excitement, whatever gets you excited, is so critical. Um, yeah. Can I? Let me ask you this. How how do you feel about the idea of transcribing sound and tones? Like we, oh, yeah. we've talked about transcribing lines and notes, but do you feel any kind of way about transcribing a sound? And what does that mean for you? Yeah, like absolutely. I've tried to cop people's sounds a lot a- and yeah. feel as well, actually, because mm-hmm. it's not just the notes, is it? It's like the it's right. the sound. And it's the feel. So that does actually, yeah, like heavily come into it. Um, it's something I think that I got into it later. It's, it's not something I was like into straight off the bat, but it's definitely yeah. something that I, that I got into later. How about you? I mean, I, I think that was a big unlock for me of just uh, leaning into something I loved with all the synth-based things that I do and thinking about mm. like, wow, the, the synth-based thing is such an interesting... There aren't very many instruments... That where there's a primary function of an instrument and then a whole different instrument doing the same function. It's really yeah. odd in mm-hmm. bass where there's, I mean, I, I suppose in drums too, because there's drum machines. So playing a oh, drum yeah. kit yeah, is yeah, very yeah. different yeah. than programming drums, but yeah. both really help each other out. You know, like I heard Aaron Sterling, a great session drummer, talking about how he'll play drums on stuff, but He's then so if crazy. it needs it, he'll yeah. program, like he'll, he'll program full tunes and you won't even get on kit. He's a and monster so in the studio as well. He's a monster. Just yeah. a monster. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And if anybody I wants will... to check him out, he plays with John Mayer. 
<laughs> yes, he does. Yeah. Yes. And his Instagram is incredible and funny. <laughs> he's a funny Isn't dude. Isn't he so funny? Oh, he's yeah, so he's funny. Yeah. yeah. He's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I think so. The synth bass thing, I think it's so fascinating because here is a role and a, and a different sound that is doing your job. So instead of going, oh, weird. Oh, oh I don't know. You know, I don't want to do that. What I've decided to do is instead of trying to, you know, buy the synthesizer and learn keys, wow, I wonder if I can learn how to make those sounds on the electric bass. And boy, it just opens up a huge world yeah. because there's interval jumps and there's weird sounds and things that are just so difficult to get together. But when you do, it's like, it's, you know, it's like that video game next level unlock Dude, feeling. It's such a fun are, feeling. You are obscenely good at it. <laughs> well, <laughs> obscene. That's, that's thing, very gracious. That thing that you that you posted to me and Pablo the other day of like you play like a Charlie the was, Charlie XCX tune. It's yeah, just obscene. <laughs> it's like I watched it. And I was like, dude. <laughs> Oh, well, crazy, thank you, crazy, crazy good. How can people That's, go see that? Is it on your Instagram? Yeah, yeah. I think I put it up. I put up a, a, a version of it anyway, and maybe Pablo will put it up on S or, uh, SBL too. But um, yeah, I I love this artist. I think she's from the UK, Charlie XCX, and she's a pop artist. But the production yeah. is so uh, just really kind of avant-garde there's something there's certain pop artists that have this production that's just floors me where it's not the typical thing there's like different sounds and textures and it sounds really cinematic and dangerous somehow and charlie's Dude, charlie always leans into that territory i think I this like is it i think that we should end it on this i'm gonna hold it up to the mic is this it i'm gonna hold it as well so people can see it as well <laughs> just check this out What? Oh. oh, you're nice. Oh, oh look. Then the, there's a tapping phrase. This bit. Yeah, coming up here. What? <laughs> <laughs> and look how happy you look. <laughs> look. It makes me happy. This bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, dude. <laughs> it's so Mate, nice. I've got nothing else to say. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, you know, go transcribe that. <laughs> yeah, transcribe. I mean, yeah, like I, you know, I hear a synthesizer go, and I just, I'm just filled with wonder, and then I go. I wonder if I can do that. And then, you know, over the years, I just tried to put, you know, I do a thing where I go, you know, left hand, first finger tap, right hand, first finger tap, then follow second finger, second finger, third finger, third finger, and backwards. So one, one, two, two, three, three, two, two, one, one. And, and if you coordinate that on a, like a, on an arpeggio or on a, um, like a pentatonic scale, you can go, yeah. and it's, can you and know? it's not can you know? actually. <laughs> <laughs> can you know? Yeah. Yeah, you can. I don't know I if mean, I can. can. <laughs> <laughs> you could. I mean, it's, it's funny because it's not actually all that. I mean, I'm not doing that on gigs all the time, but I actually have done that on records where someone has said, oh, I, I want kind of a, a flourish or like, wouldn't it be cool to like lock up with this thing? And mm -hmm. it's something fast. And I'd actually don't have very fast fingers or very fast. I'm, I'm actually very slow with a pick. I've always struggled with speed, but the, the tapping, the like six finger tapping thing, um, I can go, get it. fast. Yeah, like it was, it's actually sort of yeah. like a cheat mode for me. <laughs> yeah, dudes, go anyway. check out Ian's Instagram or it'll be on our Instagram as well. Just to give you an idea of when it was posted, it was posted, oh, it says two days ago. When was it? So it's posted because you'll be able to go to Ian's Instagram. It's posted on the 12th of January. So go check that out. <laughs> oh, hey, man, that's and, real sweet. Yeah. And again, thanks again for hanging out with us this week. Um, as usual, we'll be back next week. And yeah. uh, any, any closing thoughts, Ian? I just think, um, take, if you have any, if transcription feels daunting, all it means is learning something you like. 
It just yeah. means learning something you think is cool and repeating it back. Yeah. And it is simple as that. You don't have to know standard notation. You don't have to do it at a blazing speed if you're into, you know, horn solos. You get to choose how you want to do that. But you do have to do it by ear. And you do have to do it note by note. And what's going to happen is it's going to connect to some things you already know. It's going to give you a new little piece of vocabulary. And it's going to make you go, going to step you up in a little sense on the instrument. And that's there's yeah. nothing better than that. Dudes, what he said. <laughs> Dudes, thanks again for listening. We'll see you next week. Take it easy. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>